Hello Linux fans, Rob here. Welcome to Linux Quest. So from my last video, you know that I am giving Linux Mint 18.2 Beta a proper run through all the way through till final release. And the reason behind that, not to recap too much of the last video, is that I've, you know, I just don't run Linux Mint proper with the Cinnamon desktop. Don't run it as a daily driver typically. I don't go to it. I know it's extremely popular, but there are things within the Cinnamon desktop that I just never really cared for. And, you know, I'm, I, I tend to gravitate towards more Arch distros anyway. But I want to be able to do a thorough review of, you know, lots of options and selection on uh, various things within the desktop and the operating system that are available for a really good thorough review because, hey, let's face it, uh, Linux Mint continues to be rated number one within DistroWatch and, um, you know, continues to be an extremely popular distro. All right, so one of the Linux Quest viewers, a long-time viewer, actually, I think, um, Colin, I think you, you probably watched the first video I did when I started Linux Quest about nine months ago. I, I seem to recall that, Colin, you were maybe one of the first people to remark on one of my videos. I'll have to go back and look. But anyway, you've been a friend of the channel for a long time, and thank you. So Colin brought to my attention a couple of menu options. So I wanted to kind of do a comparo here and take a look at what's available and share that with you, but also get into a little bit of the configuration of each one of these menus instead of just you know showing you what is there by default. Okay, so let's jump in first and take a look at the default menu, which we have set up here. This is exactly what you see when you launch in for the first time on the Cinnamon desktop. If you right click on this, you're going to have some options. You can go to configure. We're going to hop up here to about and this just says menu. There's no version number or anything like that. The next menu option that we have here, we're going to right click and go to about is called custom cinnamon menu and for a very, very good reason. So we'll get into that in just a minute as well. But you'll see um, this is drastically different, but this is not default. So we're going to go into the settings here so that you can kind of get an idea of what this actually looks like in default. And last but certainly not least, um, we're going to, oops, wrong one. Last but certainly not least, we're going to take a look at Cine menu. Now you can add Cine menu and custom cinnamon menu. Uh, for whatever reason, I just don't like saying those three together, but um, you can add those within applets. So applets are, if you run GNOME, applets could be considered almost like extensions in a way, I guess. Um, so lots of applets here, and these are typically found within the Spices webpage, which I'll put a link to. Um, but you can launch into applets, which is built into Linux Mint, and you can do a search or you could go into available applets online here and you'll see here a nice long list of various applets um, so anyway we'll move on from there okay let's talk first about the default menu uh, I'm gonna go right click configure and here you're gonna see options with two different tabs two different categories of options the first one is panel, and from here you could use a custom icon. So that solves my problem of the default Linux Mint logo icon. And you could also go in and change the text. So uh, we're going to leave that at menu for now, but you could type essentially you know, whatever description you wanted here. Uh, maybe you just came from Windows and you love seeing start there, so you could type start in, so for example. Then you have some keyboard options here. And uh, then you have an option to open the menu when you uh, move the mouse over it. Now I have that off by default, or I have that off, and I think it's off by default, uh, but we could toggle that on just to see what that looks like. And then you can adjust the uh, hover delay. Now the animations I believe were turned on and I turned those off so we'll turn those back on. Now you've got some additional options here and that is the the icons themselves. So if you take a look you've got three rows of icons. This row being larger than these two. So this kind of stands out as favorites and this is log out, shut down, so on and so forth. 
I think that was my problem with this menu. I just, for whatever reason, having three rows of icons, it just seemed a little uh, cluttered, I guess. So, messing around here, we're going to go ahead and turn off the category icons. We'll leave the application icons on. And then I'm going to turn off the show favorites and the quit options. And just want to, as well as the uh, show bookmarks and places. So we'll go ahead and turn that off. And I just want to show you how different that looks now. Um, no icons here. It gives it a much cleaner look. Now, again, to each his own here. Everybody likes their desktop to be set up a particular way. Some people just use it as default. Whatever is presented to them, that's what they use, and they're happy with that. And I think that is fantastic. Uh, others, you you know, like me, you like things a particular way to work a particular way. So this cleans it up a bit. One thing I would love to see here is the option to move the search bar to the bottom and then maybe to the right, a space for three icons or two icons for shut down and log out. I think that would make the default cinnamon menu, for my purposes, a, a much, much improved uh, menu. So, all right, so that kind of covers that. Um, that's about it as far as your options are concerned. You can go into the menu editor and you can take out anything that you wouldn't use. So, for example, if you never use the education category, you could turn that off um, or simply delete that. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and close that out. And then you've got options here for behavior, uh, auto scroll, and then you could enable the file system path entry in the search box. All right, so we'll go ahead and close that out so you'll see how different that looks. Next up, let's go to custom cinnamon menu. And I'm going to go ahead and jump right into configure. And we're going to go ahead and change some things real quick. Um, I'm going to turn off the custom menu. I'm going to kind of take this back to default. Uh, we'll go into settings here, enable auto scroll. Uh, let's see, let's go to layout. All right, so we'll turn on favorites and quit options, bookmarks and places, recents. I believe all of this was turned on. Uh, hide application scroll bar, maybe not. Uh, let's see here. What else did I change? I'll go into extras. Didn't change a lot within extras. And then you've got custom launchers. And then lastly here we have appearance. So you've got many more tabs with many more options. And so the name is perfect. Custom cinnamon menu. That's exactly what it is. Let's go over here to appearance. I'm going to take these icons back down, I think. I think they were around 26. So we'll take these down to where they were by default. You can spend a lot of time with this one, uh, for sure. Let's see, I believe that was uh, 22 and 48 by default. So here, one difference you'll find is once you've made all these changes, you have to click on Save Settings, where within the default menu, you just make the changes and they just apply. All right, so let's go ahead and close this out. Now we'll take a look. And you see here that this looks much closer to the um, default menu with the exception of um, the search bars now at the bottom as opposed to the top, but you can change that. And then you've got a row here of other uh, settings. Now, by default, there are actually more um, shortcuts turned on here. So we have, let's see, that's going to launch into system info. Um, should have known that. Printer settings. There should be or there was a pop-up before and then that's just regular settings. But you get the idea here with custom menu. You can spend a lot of time here. We're going to go in and configure a few more things. Let's go back over to appearance and we will bump up the or make the custom icon size a little smaller. Uh, let's see here. Auto fit width of the search box with the menu width. So we'll turn that on. And let's see if there's anything else I'm missing. You know, you've got theme overrides here. I mean, this is really in depth. You could do almost a video on just custom cinnamon menu because of all of the options that are available here. Extras. Uh, show the lock screen button. There we go. We'll turn some of these on. There's log out. Those were all on by default. 
and right here run with nvidia gpu on context so i mean on and on the list whoever did this um they've really put some time into this uh you can hide the applications list scroll bar for example so we'll just turn that on you could hide the all applications category and then you've got options here for custom launcher box placement and let's see here left of the search box right of the search box we'll check that out all right so we made enough changes here so that you can get the idea we'll click on save settings there you go so again search is on the bottom and then you've got the additional uh, shortcuts here and then on the left again this is more like the default cinnamon menu You've got options now for shutdown, logout, so on and so forth. I would say, without a doubt, the custom cinnamon menu is the one that's most, most configurable, or the one that I've found so far that is the most configurable. Um, so if, you, you know, if you're like me and you've just never been crazy about the default launcher and you're looking for something that really lets you get into minute settings and really change this thing at a level that I've never seen a menu launcher with this many options before. So this, I, I would say this is like the ultimate, uh, the ultimate tweaking menu. So uh, maybe that would be a good name for it. The ultimate tweaking menu, but at any rate, lots here to, uh, to go in and change and configure. All right. So next up on the list, we're going to launch into again, send a menu. Now this is close to the default look of Cine Menu, and I just want to point out here this was kind of interesting so when you go to all applications you'll notice that your icons although you have four columns your icons are smaller when you go to accessories they increase in size and that's based on the number of applications that are listed within that particular category and there's an option to toggle that on or off and to keep all of the icons the same size as long as they'll fit within the columns that you have. This is a very hybrid looking menu. Um, if you like the full screen launcher uh, or dash, you know, for example, this is kind of a hybrid of that. It's not full screen. There's still categories on the left. But, um, you know, again, this is a really interesting option with more configuration than the default menu. One thing I like here is your lock, log out, and shut down. I like that here on the bottom, and I believe you can move search down here as well. Um, you know, if you had that option within the default menu to where you could add that right here, again, I think you'd have, for my purposes, almost the perfect menu launcher. All right, so let's go into configuration here for Cine Menu. And you can, of course, edit what's listed there. So again, if you don't use education, for example, um, you could turn that off. Uh, programming, if you're not a programmer, you could turn that off. And we'll click close there. Now, here in Cine Menu, uh, this just kind of saves automatically. You don't have to click on Save Settings. Uh, so we're going to do a couple of things. I would just want to point out a quick change uh, from Grid Mode to List Mode. So we'll change that, and then you'll quickly see now looks more traditional. So this is actually the menu that I've been using um, as I'm you know, doing my daily task within the operating system because this kind of gives that combination that I talked about over here within the default. Now one thing that I haven't done is you've got all of the um, categories here on the left. I'm going to turn off those icons and see if we can clean it up a little bit. The one thing I've noticed though is you've still got kind of, I guess I'll call it dead space. You've got a lot of space here. Um, and I've tried to even look for um, the application with the longest description and, and maybe turn that off to see if that will decrease the size here. All right, so let's go into some of the options. So you'll see here You've just got really one tab of options. And so first of all, we're going to go to the category icon size. We've got category icon size, application list icon size, and then the application grid icon size. Now, when we first launched into that, 
I pointed out how the icons would change depending on how they were uh, or how many icons were uh, in that particular category. It would kind of adjust on the fly to fill in the gap with the four columns. Here we're going to go ahead and just turn that off. And you've also got an option to change the grid label width. So we're going to just shrink that down just to kind of make changes as we go so that you can see uh, where things are and kind of how they how they apply. And uh, we're going to go back down here to use animations, auto scrolling. Here we go. Number of columns. Uh, the minimum is three and the maximum is seven. But we're on list, so I'm just going to take that down to three. And then the other thing I'm going to do is under category icon size, we're going to take that. The minimum is 16. And I haven't seen a place where you could actually turn off the icons. So that's where it doesn't have quite the options as we had over here on custom where you could turn off those icons or even the default for that matter. I just haven't found it. Maybe I'm overlooking it in this list. Um, but anyway, let's go ahead and take a look at it. So here, um, now that these are smaller, they take up less space. But again, kind of a big gap here, I guess. But for the most part, uh, this is the one I use. It's, uh, it's fairly nice. We're going to go ahead and tell you what, we'll bump this up. I haven't done this yet. We'll bump this up to 34. Kind of a different look there. At least it fills the space a little better. And then up here is a quick toggle. So if you want to go right back to grid view, so we could close this out. And let's say you're just bored with list view. Now you're right back into grid view. And, and since we toggled off the auto adjustment, you'll notice that all of the icons remain the same. So kind of fun. And again, thank you, Colin, for bringing these menus to my attention. And, uh, you know, I love sharing this kind of thing because this, for me, this is the fun part of, of Linux. And, um, you know, it, operating systems aren't, certainly are not all about work. Uh, you know, for people, for enthusiasts like you folks that watch and myself, we like to have fun with our operating systems. And Linux uh, allows you to have more fun than any other operating system out there that I'm aware of. Uh, well, Android lets you do some things, but I don't consider it a full-on operating system. Chrome OS is not, I don't consider that a full-on operating system. For the sake of argument, I'm going to say that, you know, you compare to Windows, you compare to Mac. Certainly Linux is going to come out on top with the ability to go in and have options for things like this and fun with your operating system, fun with your desktop. So, um, all right, well, hopefully you've enjoyed this. Hopefully this helps. Thanks for watching, and we will check you later.